So in this video, we're going to take a look at the idea of decision statements as well as booleans, so values that could be either true or false. And booleans are a really good place to start because it actually turns out that C doesn't really have a built-in boolean type by default. What I mean by that is that without including anything in this project, if I do something like bool, uh, we could say check equals false, you'll see that it actually won't compile. It will give me some sort of error. And you can see that error is that it doesn't know what bool is. And it actually suggests to me that maybe I want to include this stdbool.h file. And that's exactly what we want to do. If we want to work with Boolean values, there's a few different ways that we can do so in C. And one of the ways that we can get that type is by including this stdbool.h file. That will give us this Boolean type that can be set to either true or false. So now when I compile, you see I get no errors. Now, there's something else to keep in mind, and that's that a lot of C code is written in sort of older versions of C that don't have this standard bool. And what you're going to see in these types of situations is that we fall back to really like the default computer idea that we have either a value of zero or a value of one, where zero is false and one is true. And they'll use one of many ways of being able to represent true and false as one and zero. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about these different ways. There's things like macros and enums that we can use for this. And we'll, we'll see those types of ideas as we continue on through this course. But generally, this is the idea is that we can either use 0 and 1 to represent true or false, or we can include this standard bool.h file to be able to represent true or false. And of course, true and false can be used for a variety of different things, right? We have the typical sort of idea, like relations, where we want to check, you know, if A is greater than B, or, you know, if A is less than B, if less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Uh, we have, you know, does not equal, which looks like this in C, and then equals, which looks like this in C, right? So we have all these different logical operators that we can use to be able to, you know, check if something is true or false. And the main way that we set up logic based on if something is true or false is using, of course, decision structures like if statements. So let's do like a very simple example to sort of discuss some of the ways that we can use these concepts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some code that is going to take an input for a user's age. So I'm going to declare an age variable equal to zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan for their age and I'm going to place it inside of that age variable. And then we're going to do something with that age. So we're going to say if the age is uh, greater than or equal to 18, we're going to print f older than 18. Otherwise, which we do with an else, we are going to print younger than 18. And really, this sort of logic follows the typical structure of an if statement, right? If you've seen any other programming language, this is really the way that it generally works. We have this if condition, then we have this else condition here, right? And everything between the brace brackets are the things that pertain to that block, right? And I actually just realized in saying that, I'm missing this closing brace for that if statement. So just make sure that you have that as well. So this code is going to scan for an age. It's then going to print out a value based on what age was given. So let's take a look at that. So as I compile this, I can run start. And I have to input some sort of age, so say 20. And you say I get older than 18. If I input in something less, I get younger than 18. So you can see that that generally works for our decision structure. Now, if I wanted to, there's a few different things that I could do here. Well, for one, I could prompt the user to enter an age. So I could say, enter your age like this. Another thing that I'll just do here is I'll just quickly put in these new line characters to make it a bit more clean. And then something else that we could decide to do is we could decide to store the result in a boolean and then check the boolean in the if statement. So I could say uh, bool age check equals age greater than or equal to 18, like this. And then what I could do is I could just say if age check. What that will do is it will check to see if it's true. If it's true, it goes into this top block here. If it's false, it goes into this bottom block here. So that's another way that we could set up this kind of logic. Let's go ahead and give that a try. You'll see now it says enter your age. I enter an age older than 18. It says older than 18, less than 18, younger than 18, right? So you can see generally that's the way that that works. Now, we can of course have else if statements as well. 
So, you know, we could do that age check and then we could say else if, you know, and then we could do some other condition here. You know, so for instance, we could check to see if the age is less than zero. And then in this kind of case, we could say invalid age, you know, because an age can't be negative really. And then we could have an else that, you know, takes a look at like the last sort of situation. So we could say like else, and then we could have like a print F and say, uh, younger than 18. So this might be an example of ways that we can use like if, else, and else if together, right? And we can see this example here, we really just added on one little condition, right? If I put in a negative number now, it gives me invalid age as a result. So this gives you some of that general intuition behind if statements in C. And like I said before, like if you've programmed in any other language, this is a very common structure, right? This if, else, else, if type of idea. And generally the main things that we're keeping in mind here is if we want the Boolean type to be able to store that result before we go into a branch or something of that sort, we need to include standard bool. And if you're working in an older version of C, you'll likely see Booleans represented as a zero for false or a one for true. So with this, you now have a pretty good understanding of decision structures and the various different relations that exist. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.